I had a great time overseas. As a matter of fact, whenever I stayed too long in one place, I become a little bit, um, I start feeling the wanderlust like I want to get out overseas. But um, we lived in some very interesting places. I was born in Thailand, and then we came back to the U.S. for some time. We went overseas to Ghana, Liberia, and then came back here for a little while. And that's when my parents moved to South Africa. I think the advantages outweigh any possible drawbacks. I don't think I really think that there are any drawbacks. I was fortunate to have the opportunity to study different languages, to experience different cultures, and to uh, just be around different kinds of people. And I think it made me more open-minded. I'm not saying more open-minded than my friends who grew up here, but just it gave me the advantage of being able to see things from someone else's perspective. Well, my mother always described my father as a workaholic. And he was generally working a lot. He would work at home, and he would go into the office on Saturdays, uh, and sometimes Sundays. But he had a study at home, and he was generally working most of the time. I was fairly aware of it. Um, in sort of a tangential way. I was at, actually, I was in boarding school at the time, and uh, we were pretty vocal about South Africa at our boarding school. Um, I was at Phillips Academy, and they also divested from any um, companies that had business in South Africa. So it was, it was, it was on my horizon, but I wasn't, and I did join the students who were, um, involved in South Africa, but of course that involvement became much more when he went down to South Africa. I was excited, but I was also a little bit scared for him. Well, I think generally it was just the inequality between the races in South Africa and, um, you know, high school is, can be a time of, um, self-awareness and an awareness of what's going on in the world. <clears throat> and so we were very interested in that chapter of history. I thought it was extremely significant and I thought it was a bold move, you know, for the U.S. government and for Reagan to send him down there to South Africa. Some people thought that he was just going to be a puppet, um, but I knew that wasn't the case. Just knowing him, I knew that wasn't going to be the case. I wasn't apprehensive to go. I, I should say I felt safe wherever my parents were, just like anyone else usually. You know, when one goes home, oftentimes one feels the most comfortable and relaxed, and that's how I felt whenever I went uh, to visit my parents. I spent spring break there, summer vacations there, and Christmas vacations. So I was there a fair amount. And I actually volunteered at one of the hospitals in Cape Town over the summer, Hutuskir uh, Hospital, which was where the first heart transplant was performed. Well, most people thought I was South African. Um, they thought I was South African colored. And so people just treated me as though they would treat anyone else until I opened my mouth. And they also realized that I didn't speak Afrikaans. Because generally people, especially Afrikaners, would approach me and speak to me in Afrikaans. And sometimes they would become very offended when I did not speak back to them. There was definitely a veneer of civility and it was almost as if people were a little bit clueless. They didn't really know how to interact with us. And um, the first question would be always be, how do you like our country? And the standard response was always, it's very beautiful, if you wanted to keep things civil. And I also realized I, I couldn't, I found it difficult to gauge 
how they would uh, react to any real conversation. I didn't really want to get into that. It depended on my mood, to be honest. So generally people were very polite, as long as uh, one didn't question what was going on in their country. I spoke to black South Africans and people of color, but I didn't really speak to, I didn't speak to any white South Africans. It was, I didn't really interact with white South Africans who were my age. I met them sometimes at parties, but it was very awkward. I felt awkward because of the situation down there. Oh, well, I think they thought it was a very unequal and unfair situation, and um, generally they seemed supportive of my, my father being down there, and I think they were happy to, um, that there were Americans who sympathized with them. Because I was in boarding school, I did not really uh, have any friends there who were in the embassy, uh, children of embassy staff. I did go to a party with um, South African contemporaries, but not I don't remember really hanging out with any Americans. I think that would be difficult to gauge because I wasn't there for extended periods of time. I didn't live there consistently. But I will say that my sister and I um, tried to go to a pool in Pretoria and they wouldn't let us in, but they were very embarrassed and I feel like they didn't really know how to handle the situation. And um, we left and told my dad and I think he called the Minister of Home Affairs and or wrote him a letter. And they desegregated the pool, but we never went back to that pool. And the same thing happened when we were traveling throughout the country. I had a friend visit uh, South Africa with me from boarding school. And we went to a hotel. And they wouldn't let us stay there. We had made reservations, but when they saw who we were, they wouldn't let us stay there. And again, my dad wrote a letter and they desegregated. I mean, they, they said that they accepted all races at the hotel, but that those, those instances were just particular to us and we're Americans, so didn't really apply to the general population. I think in retrospect, it just confirmed and solidified my belief that he is someone who always does the best that he can and has very strong convictions in himself and family and his country. Well, I think it made me stronger as well, just being in that situation and having to navigate uh, that society. It just made me more able to deal with uh, different situations as they come up. Definitely. It was, I felt like he laid a much of the groundwork leading up to that moment um, and to Nelson Mandela's release. I thought it was unfortunate that he couldn't be there at that time, but then they did end up meeting later.